Hello everyone, I'm Said Mandegar. Welcome back to yet another tutorial. So great to have you here. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 rendering tips that help you improve your rendering quality while optimizing your rendering time. Now, let's dive in. If you need to quickly render a shot and you don't have enough time to tweak the settings, using the default setting is a great approach. While they might not provide the highest quality, the results are still quite good and save you a lot of time. Once you have used the default settings a few times, you can start exploring and adjusting some of the options to gradually improve your results. In the next few minutes, I will show you some critical options that impact the balance between quality and render time. One of the most important factors in the rendering process that affect both on rendering time and quality is the output size. In my experience, 2.5K is a great size that allows your materials to look as detailed as you intended. This size ensures that the small details in your models are visible without significantly increasing render time. However, remember that output size is just one aspect of the balance between render quality and time. If you keep the settings the same, increasing the output size will improve quality but also extend rendering time. Light Lister is a huge time saver for managing lights. It allows you to easily find and select your lights and adjust settings like multiplier, temperature, type, and visibility. Plus, if you are in IPR rendering mode, you can see the changes instantly, making your workflow much faster and more efficient. Displacement is a crucial factor affecting RAM usage, rendering time, and rendering quality. Even if displacement is hidden behind other geometry in the camera view, it is still calculated and consumes RAM. To optimize this, disable the displacement. Next, under the Settings tab, go to Default Displacement. Here, you will see Override Max option, which specifies the size of details in pixels for output render. Lower values add more details, increasing RAM usage and rendering time. You can uncheck this option to manage rendering time more efficiently. Displacement often causes crashes, especially when rendering high-resolution images. It can make the calculation of the light cache endless. Additionally, renders might get stuck while compiling scene geometry or building the Embrace Static Accelerator with memory utilization hitting 100%. In most cases, a bump map and a normal map are more than enough. By deactivating displacement and the override max option, you can save rendering time without negatively affecting the final result. Before you start rendering your scene, it's a good idea to begin with IPR. IPR helps you double check everything, ensuring the lighting is right, the objects are correctly positioned, and the camera composition is perfect. Once you're satisfied with how everything looks, you can stop the IPR and move on to the next step. Always try to render a small part of your scene focusing on the areas with the main materials.
Check the dark areas too and adjust the object positions to allow more light in. By taking a few sample shots from your final render setup, you can ensure the quality meets your expectation before you commit to the full render. This way, everything is optimized and managed, resulting in the highest quality. When using Bucket Image Sampler, you can adjust the settings to get the best output quality based on your scene's details. Once you set the image sampler type to bucket mode, you can control the minimum and maximum subdivisions. Higher max subdivisions result in a better quality, but you usually don't need to set it too high. For most scenes without complex lighting, detailed objects, or close-up compositions, setting the max subdivs to 16 will give you excellent result while saving time. Additionally, setting the noise threshold to around 0.005 or 0.008 can help you achieve a nice, clean render. The best render setup settings alone aren't enough to achieve a realistic result. You always need to enhance your shots in V-Ray Frame Buffer and Photoshop using render elements. There are some essential elements you should add in the Render Element tab. Once your render is done, you can review those layers in the V-Ray Frame Buffer and use them during post-production. I will be creating a complete tutorial on V-Ray Frame Buffer post-production soon. Adding lights to render elements ensures that you can always adjust your lighting even after the render is complete. This means you won't need to re-render just to fix light intensity or temperature. You can even turn lights on and off. To add your lights, use the light lister I explained earlier in this video. Simply go to the top view, press add and click on the lights to include them in the list. Once the render is done, you will have full control over every light on the list. This not only saves you a lot of time, but also allows you to fine-tune your lighting after rendering the shot. Resumable rendering lets you pause your render and resume it later. To enable this, go to the V-Ray tab, open the frame buffer, and enable the resumable rendering option. There are a few important steps to follow to ensure your paused render stays safe and ready to continue. I have a detailed video on resumable rendering that you can watch for more information. Check the link I've included here or in the description. That's it for me guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit that like button if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell to be informed about the next videos. See you soon, have fun!